Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today we're going to cover our network setup on Mountain Lion Server. Now if you remember in our last uh, two tutorials I showed you how to set up Mountain Lion and get it running on your computer. Now what we need to do is make sure that your IP addresses on your server are correct and are constant, uh, especially for your server. Uh, a couple of things to notice uh, about the server interface. Uh, again, it looks very similar to Lion, almost identical with a few little changes in the sidebar. But they have this handy little uh, set of steps down here that you can walk through uh, for next steps. This little drawer here kind of pops up and down. And you can uh, set up configuring your network, adding users, reviewing certificates, start services, manage devices. And this is just kind of a, a nice little uh, mini tutorial thing that you can walk through for setting up your server. And so the first thing it talks about is configuring your network. And so what, we, what I want to do is walk you through how to make that happen. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do is make sure that your uh, server has a permanent IP address. It has more of a static uh, internal IP address so that it doesn't change. Because when you're using DHCP, you're, um, a lot of times it'll assign IP addresses depending on what's taken or what's not. And so you want to make sure that you have a static one for the uh, serv for the server so that those things don't change. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. So let me uh, let's go to our airport utility, and we'll use that to get us set up. Now, if you haven't uh, purchased a router yet and you're thinking about which one to get, I would highly recommend getting an Apple uh, Airport Extreme router. Uh, the main reason is that the server app can control this router so that uh, you can do all of your changes with the router through your server application and there's little, uh, little mess with having to get that set up and make those changes happen. So it makes it pretty easy to get those things done and to set up your router. So if you haven't thought of one yet, I would get an Apple router. You can get any router you want. Uh, server will work with it, but you're going to have to do a lot more configuration yourself behind the scenes with that particular router's application to get this to work. So now I'm in the airport utility uh, that comes with uh, with your airport and comes with uh, Mountain Lion. And so uh, as you can see here, I've got an Apple router set up, internet's connected, I got green dots, everything's good. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my server gets the same IP address every time it connects so that it doesn't have uh, different ones that happen. And so if I just cl come here and click edit, It'll take me into the airport utility interface. And what I want to do is I want to go to this network tab up here. And if you'll notice, uh, it has a number of things on here. You'll see that our router mode is DHCP and NAT. Okay, uh, let me just explain what that means. DHCP is just the uh, system that assigns IP addresses to your various computers so that when a computer comes on your network, it needs to have some kind of address that identifies it as that device uh, to your network. And so it assigns uh, different uh, IP addresses. And you can see here in the DHCP range, we've got 10.0.1.2 to 10.0.1.200. And so we have this wide range of IP addresses that we can use uh, to assign to devices on our network. And so that's what DHCP does. NAT is basically just a port forwarding protocol that allows you to open up certain ports on your router so that you have access uh, to your router through the internet because your router serves as kind of a physical uh, firewall against the internet. And so that's what that means. And so we have both of those things running because I have something here on port settings for printer sharing that's already set up. Okay, so that's, that's why that is set up that way. And so eventually you're going to go this way as well once I show you how to do port forwarding. Now, you'll notice in this section here it says DHCP reservations. And so what we want to do is make a reservation for our server to make sure that it gets the same IP address every time so that that doesn't change. Because we're going to keep generally keep the server on, but if for some reason we have to reboot it and then it reassigns an IP address, it's going to cause us problems. So if you just click this plus button right here, a little drop down will come down where you can put in a, a description. And so what I'm just going to I'm just going to put in, uh, you know, server I'm just going to put that in there so I know that it's the server that I'm assigning this particular IP address to. Now, I can reserve the address by a couple of means. I can do it by MAC address or DHCP client ID. Now, really, the best way to do it, the easier way to do it is MAC address uh, as opposed to your client ID. Uh, it's a little bit easier to find, so we're going to keep it as MAC address, but then we've got a problem. What, what is our MAC address? We need to go find it. So the way that you find that is you go up to the Apple over here, and you go to System Preferences. Now, System Preferences will pop up, and you want, and if you see the Show All here, you want to go to the Network tab. And in the Network tab area, you just want to come down here to Advanced. 
And when you click that in advanced, you see all these different tabs. You want to go over to hardware. And on hardware, right here is your MAC address. That's the address of this particular computer. So you're going to want to copy that. So you can do a command C uh, if you want, or you can use the menu if you want to. We're going to copy that. And I'm just going to click cancel here. And we're going to go into our airport utility. And then we're just going to paste that MAC address right here. So command V, paste it right in the spot. So now I know that it's this particular computer that I'm going to reserve an IP address for. So now I need to pick a particular IP address. Now you can pick whatever one you want. Uh, depending on your system, it may not be 10.0. Uh, it might be you know, a different number. It could be 196, could be 172. Who knows what yours is. Uh, but you want to pick a number that's not already taken. And uh, usually um, you want to keep it a low number because that makes it easily identifiable. Now I'm not going to put, see and if you notice, I can just change the last number. That's it. I'm not going to put a 1 here because the 1 is for my router because my router is the one that I've chosen to distribute all of the IP addresses. I'm not going to have my server do that. I'm going to do that through my router. Now if you had your server do it, you could put a 1 there if you want to, but I'd recommend just going with a 2 or some other number on up. So I'm going to leave this like this because I know that this is the particular IP address that's already on it and it's the lowest number I can go. So I'm going to click Save. And you'll notice that now it shows my description of my server and it shows my IP address so that I know that that reservation is made. So that that thing is already set up and it's ready to go. So now that I've got this uh, ready to go, we've pasted it in. Now I'm just going to click Save. Okay, I'm going to click Update. And what's going to happen is, is I'm gonna, once I click Update, it's going to actually uh, restart my router. See, it says my network services are going to be unavailable. I'm going to click Continue. And so now it's updating my router. It's rebooting my router and it's going to add that uh, new reservation. And so when that's done, I'm going to come back and we'll talk about uh, ways you can set this up across the rest. Okay, now we're back and we can see that the router has rebooted itself. It's got green dots there. That means everything's okay. Uh, as far as the router's concerned, our reservation is now set. Now what we need to do is check to make sure that everything's okay across on our computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, we're going to go into the, uh, server application here and we're going to take a look and what you want to do is go into your computer whatever your computer name is here and you want to go to the network tab and what you'll notice is you'll notice if everything's good your Ethernet number should say the number that you set up and reserved on your server which in my case 10.0.1.2 is what I reserved so it looks like everything is good you'll also notice down in the dialog down below here it will actually tell you what your server name is and what your IP address is so there's another way you can check it down there now, let's assume for, for instance something went wrong where maybe this didn't work for you and you need to check it out and, and change it or you need to uh, adjust it because it didn't work. Well, there's a couple of ways that you can fix that and check that out. And so the first one I want to show you is with uh, system preferences. I'm going to pull that back up here. If you go back into the network area, you'll notice here's our Ethernet connection and you'll be able to see our IP address here. You can see right now we're uh, configuring using DHCP. And so that's all set up and ready to go. You can see the IP address we've got set here. You can see my router is here uh, giving me the information. And let's just say this number wasn't right. It wasn't what you, what you wanted. You need to make the change. Now, you can make the change in here as well uh, if for some reason it was off. And you can do that by just going to manually. And if I click manually, you'll notice that everything opens up. I can put in the IP address for whatever I want, the subnet mask. I can change the router address. I can make those kind of changes right here if I want to do that. Now, uh, like I said, you'll notice the router address is different than the IP address um, of my server. That's because I'm allowing the router to make the changes. Uh, sometimes you'll want to make those things match. It doesn't really matter, but the way it is now, this looks good. And so I could just set it up that way if I needed to put in the information because it wasn't right. Let me go back here just to using DHCP for a second. Oop, DHCP with the manual address. And you'll notice because I made that change, everything's here. I'm just going to revert so that it goes back to where it was. Now, you'll notice one thing I want to show you is you'll notice the DNS server here shows 127.0.0.1. Now, all this means is that when it comes to DNS, right, and DNS basically is what is, uh, what is the, um, the addressing and the naming of our servers and those kinds of things. Uh, it's the Dynamic Networking Service uh, Protocol. And so what I've got is you'll notice that it is a local address. This 1.27 is a local address. And all it's saying is it's saying, hey, when it comes to naming, when it comes to figuring out uh, you know what the names of different things are and doing that translation uh, refer to yourself for that 
And so that's referring to my own server itself. For some people who are purists, they sometimes want the IP address of your server to match the DNS server. You can do that as well, but this is okay. You can leave this alone uh, if you want. If for some reason you wanted to change this, you just go into advanced here, you go to DNS, and then you can put in whatever your DNS servers are here. Uh, and a lot of times what will happen is, is because my router is doing the DNS, it's just going to show local here. But on my router, it has also my local um, ISP's DNS servers as well. So that if it gets stuck and it can't work the DNS within itself, it will go to those other servers to find the answer. Uh, to figure out what this particular number is, how it resolves to what particular IP address. So I'm just going to cancel that for a minute. And so the way this is set up, this is set up fine. It's got exactly what I want it to do and I'm in good shape. So let me get rid of that. Let's go back to the server app. Now, if for some reason you still wanted to change it, maybe you even wanted to change your host name, uh, you can also change your network information in here. If I just go to where host name is on dot .private and I click edit, it's going to bring up the change host name dialog. And so it's going to bring up an assistant that walks me through. I can click continue on this. Again, it's going to ask me the type of host name I want. And so if I wanted to change it to be available on the internet, I could do that. I don't. I want it to be a private network because I only want VPN to be able to be the one thing that comes into my network. So I'm going to leave that alone. Click continue. Then it brings me back to connecting to my Mac. It puts in what my current host name is. I could make the change there if I needed to make a change in host name because something was off. But you'll also notice here on the network address, it shows my IP address for my uh, Ethernet port. I can click the change network button here and it brings me into the server application with everything open, right? So this stuff is open so that I can put in what I want the DNS server to be. Again, if I wanted to match uh, my particular server, I could do that um, if I wanted to put that in. Different search domains if I wanted to specify those. And DHCP client uh, ID, again, like I put in before on the router where I put in the MAC address, I could put in a client ID there. And again, it would keep it uh, the way that, uh, that I put it in there so that it would give the same IP address for my server. Now, because everything looks fine, I'm just going to cancel. The nice thing is they have these go back buttons. You can go all the way back, cancel everything, and it leaves it exactly like it was. All right, so that gives you just a, a quick snapshot of making sure that you have your DHCP reservation set up uh, for your particular Mac uh, that's operating as the server. The other thing you can do is you could also set up those reservations for other computers on your network using exactly the same process. So that if you wanted the same IP address for laptops or other computers, you can put that in there and you could have a pretty secure environment for your network just by using Mac addresses as the only clients that can log into your network. So that just walks you through that process, gives you some tips on how to do that, and lets us know that, okay, now our network settings are okay. Our IP address is good, our server name is good, and now we're ready to take the next step, and that is to, uh, we're going to look at port forwarding so that we open the right ports to the internet so we can access our server remotely. So that's all I have uh, for this week. Uh, next week I'll come back at you with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.